Okay, I'm going to go up to File and then go down to New, and I'm going to call this poster Fog City. It's going to be a fake detective, uh, fictional detective movie. Okay, uh, the width is going to be 13.5 inches by 20.5 inches. Resolution is going to be 72 pixels per inch. I'll hit OK. Here's my canvas. I'm going to double click on the background right here. I'm going to switch my color over here to black and then I'll take my flood fill so or my paint bucket tool. So I'm going to click on the gradient right here and select the paint bucket tool. Fill that in with black. All right. There are a couple other things I need to open up. So I'm going to go to file and then open. And basically you want to click on documents, go to Photoshop projects. We're going to click on Photoshop unit 04. And then we want to open up City 5, City 8, Elba 09, uh, Fog, San Francisco, California, and Lane 05. Okay, we need these five files. Okay. So I'm going to start with Elba 09. Okay, so for this movie, this, uh, this fictional movie that doesn't exist, I'm going to say that Idris Elba right here is the detective in this story. He's the lead character. Okay, so I want to remove him from this background, and this is uh, the background's pretty far out of focus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the magic wand tool, uh, and I'm going to remove this area over here and over here as much as I can. Before I do that, I'm going to double click on the background layer right here to unlock it. All right. So now I'm going to select a, just a chunk of the t of the uh, image here. You can see it's um, it's stopping at the outline of the profile of his face. That's good. So I'm going to press delete. I'll do it up here. I'll press delete. Back here, delete that. I'm just I keep selecting these areas and then deleting it. Okay. So in here I'll delete this. I'll select this and delete it. So now if I select right here, it's selecting part of his jacket. I do not want to do that, okay? So from here, what I'll do is I'll hit Command D and I'm going to take my lasso tool and I'm going to get rid of a whole bunch of this image here. So I'll delete that. I'm going to press Command D to deselect. And then I'm going to take my eraser. I'm going to erase right here and over here. Now I can see my eraser brush has a soft edge. I'm going to switch to a hard edge right here and then I'll erase some more here and then I'm going to want to zoom in. So I hit command plus to zoom in and I'll make my brush size smaller by hitting the bracket key and I'm going to carefully erase here. Okay. All right. Okay. So to enable the, um, in order to help me see how well I've removed the most of the background here, I'm going to create a new layer. And I'll drag layer one below layer zero, and I'll fill it in with a color. Let's say a blue color. Take my paint bucket, fill this in. So now I can kind of see where there are areas that I missed. Okay. So I'm going to switch back to layer zero, hit command plus, zoom in here. I'll take my eraser and I'm going to erase here because this is these are pixels that I missed. And then up here, over here. So you're just we're just doing some general cleanup right now. The rest of the canvas looks okay. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to go in and fix the area on his chin and his mustache because that's a little bit more difficult. Um, I'm going to I'm going to erase here as well. I think I'm going to do this right along here. Okay, so now the beard area, this is a little bit tricky. So what we want to do is we want to take the eraser, but we want to find a different type of brush. Something that has um, spots on it. So like for example, if I try this right here, 
I want to remove sections here. So what I'm doing is I'm starting here and I'm moving the, the brush out. Starting on the beard and moving out. I want to pull away and try and remove the paint that was part of the background there. So I'm going to have to go a little bit smaller on my brush here. And this is working pretty good. And let me zoom in some more here. I'll make my brush smaller and pull some of this stuff out. You can see right here, um, I erased part of his lip on accident. That was a mistake, so we'll have to go in and fix that. So let me take the clone stamp tool right here, change the brush back to a standard brush, and I'll clone this. I'll hold down the Option key, select his lip here, and just paint out a little bit further here. Okay, and then I'll take the eraser and go to my hard brush. And just edit this a little bit. Now I know that this does not look very convincing, but when it's zoomed out, you won't be able to tell. Let's see here. See, when you zoom out, you can't tell that we kind of took off a piece of his lip. Okay. All right, so let's zoom back in and let's take care of this kind of a thin line going along here. So I'll just take my eraser and trim a little bit off here. Oops, that was a little too far. I just want to smooth this out. The magic wand tool is by far not even close to perfect. And it might be faster to use the pen tool. Uh, but in general, when you're, you're removing a background, there's always some kind of little detail work that you have to do manually. So. Okay, so up here with the hair, I'm going to go back to that other brush, uh, this one right here, I think. Go smaller with the brush, and again, try and pull out the background elements. That's a little bit too much. Let me stay with the smaller version of that brush here. All right, let's see. Oops. So down here, I'll use the regular brush. So I'll go back, I'll go back up here to the hard brush remove these elements here
All right, I think that's pretty close. I don't want to spend forever on this element here. Um, if you want to spend a little more time getting the uh, removal of the background just perfect, that's fine. For me, this is going to be close enough. So I'm going to take the Move tool, and I'm going to move this layer up to Fog City, the Fog City tab, move it down, and then let go. You can see this is a very large image. So I'm going to hit Command-T, and I'll hold down the Shift key. I'll resize this, and we're going to put Idris Elba uh, right about here. Okay. And then um, right now, this area right here has a sharp edge to it. Like this kind of fades to black over here. Um, and that's good. That's good for blending into this background image. Um, but this is, you can see this sharp angle right here where the body should continue. Over here, like his face ends, right? So there shouldn't be anything past that. But here, the body should continue. So because of that, we want to blend this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, I'm going to lock transparent pixels here. So when I add something onto this, I'm only adding on to Idris Elba, the cutout here. I'm going to switch to my gradient tool and I'm going to switch to black. And up here, I'm going to select the type of gradient. And it's going to be the second one. It's going to be black to transparency, this one right here. Just hit OK. And then what I'll do is I'll just start at the bottom right here and drag up. And there we have a, a gradient that fades to black, OK? Same as it is over here. So now this is fitting into the image. It feels a little bit more organic in its placement here, OK? All right, now it's a little bit bright. This is a detective story, and I want a lot of the, I'm imagining that a lot of the scenes take place at night, so I want the pictures that are in the poster to be nighttime scenes. So I'm gonna take the levels on this image down a little bit. Uh, I'll go to, let me unlock the uh, transparent pixels here. Go to image adjustments, and then I'll go to levels, and I'm gonna take the mid tones right here and just darken them a little bit. And then I might take the output levels to go a little bit darker here. I don't know. Let's see. Preview. See how, how light it is up here? It seems like it's daytime. And then we just darken a little bit. This could be a light source from like a street lamp or something. So I like this more. It's darker. And it fits more with the tone of the movie. It's a detective story. So we want it to be darker, so it's like a film noir. Okay, so I'll hit OK right here. And then let's add in uh, another image here. Let's go to uh, lane 05, okay. So I'm gonna crop this first. We only need Diane Lane from the head down to the shoulders, right about here maybe. So I'm gonna go to image and then crop, okay. Now I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. This is a much smaller image. And uh, I can see that here, this is tough because the lens they're using is focusing. Her eyes are in focus, but her shoulder and her hair is not in focus. So this is going to be a little bit more challenging here. So uh, let's see. I'm going to, <clears throat> I'll try the magic wand tool and see what I get. Okay. That's not bad right there. I can delete that. So let me double click on the background image. Hit OK. I'll delete that. Uh, I can delete that. See, now this is going into her face, so I don't want to do that. Let's try this side. This works. It's going right to, to the hair. So I'm going to add on this selection right here. Delete it. That's going into her hair. We don't want to do that. This is all pretty difficult stuff. I can delete that. But this stuff is not. Yeah. OK. So I'm going to take my um, eraser here. I'm going to switch to one of these speckled brushes here. Hit Command Plus. resize this a little bit and I'm gonna try and remove this
Okay. Let's see what's going on on this side. Now this is actually her hair right here, so this is a little bit tricky. It might not read, so we might just have to erase all of it. Yeah, I think I'm going to erase all of it, so I'll switch back to my hard brush and just get rid of the whole thing. So we just want her skin tone. We don't want any any of the dark pixels because that's the part of the background. Okay. Okay. So I'll go along here. I'm not too concerned with the shirt. And then go a little bit smaller with my brush here and just clean this up. So I'll now just remove the rest of this. this over here this up here okay so now I need to go a little bit smaller with my brush and zoom in up here I need to get rid of this section up here okay and let's see here let's add in very quickly a background of a flat color we'll do another blue background maybe here and fill that in and see what we get okay so once you add in that blue background you can quickly see where you've missed spots okay so I'll switch back to layer zero right here, go back to my eraser, go back to my brush, zoom in, make the brush a little bit smaller here. I want to get rid of that white light. Whoops. And then over here, a little bit of light right here. Get rid of that. And then in here, this is the tricky part getting this stuff out. Okay, I've missed a spot over here. And then right here on her chin. I'm going to go back to my regular brush for this. Okay. Okay, I'm going to now take my move tool and I'm going to move this up to the fog city layer and move it down and then let go. Okay. Uh, let's see. This got rearranged here. Let me go to view works, arrange workspace. 
workspace, reset essentials, okay. All right, so now both these actions are looking the same direction. I want to flip it. So with, um, let's name these. This is uh, Idris, or Idris, I'm not sure. And this is Diane. Okay, so take the Diane layer and I'm gonna go to Edit, Transform, Flip, Horizontal. Okay, I'm gonna hit Command T, T as in Transform. I'm gonna scale this up some. All right, and then I'll press return. And then we need to do the same thing to the Diane Lane layer, okay? So right now we have a cutout, but then right here it cuts off her torso, so we want to fade to black on this. So I'm going to turn on my transparent uh, lock transparency. So it's only going to add um, a gradient to that layer where there are pixels. And then I'm going to go to the paint bucket, go to the gradient tool, switch my color to black, and add that in right there. And I might go a little bit higher on that. Yeah. Okay, so now we're kind of blending into our overall image right here. We're trying to put all these images, all these separate images together so that they seem like they belong together. They're cohesive. It's, it was planned that way, okay? even though these are all different images from different uh, sources, okay? All right, so let's see. Uh, I might darken this a little bit. There's a lot of light here. So I'm going to unlock the transparency. I'll go to Image, Adjustments, and then I'll go to Levels. And I'm going to take the midtones, go a little bit darker here. I like this because when I go lighter with the with the highlights, it's lightening her face, and I can go darker with the midtones. All right, I like that. So we're pushing these two sliders towards each other. So you can see, there's the original, and here's our preview, and it's just a little bit, it pops a little bit more, and the contrast is better. All right, this is like low contrast; everything's even, and then we just we added some contrast here, okay, so that, that looks good. Let's see if I can darken her hair a little bit more. Yeah, so much better. Okay. All right, so I'm going to hit OK, and that's done. Uh, well, it's not quite done. We need to add a little bit of a shadow behind, because right now we have these two layers on top of each other. So what I'll try and do here, right here is I'm going to try and just add a drop shadow. So I'll go to FX, go to drop shadow on the Diane layer, and then I'll move these sliders distance, spread, and size. I'm going to move all these sliders up. And then I'm looking at the angle here. I want to move the angle so that the shadow is up here. So it's separating her from Idris Elba. Okay. So I just rotate this angle until I get the shadow where I want it to be. And it seems to be at an angle of about 50, 51 degrees. Okay, so we can check the preview right here. You can see what that does. It separates her from him. Okay. So I like that. Uh, that looks good. Okay. Let's add in another image here. I'm going to go to um, City 8. No. City 5. I'm going to take my magic wand tool. I'm going to select the sky here. And it's also selecting a portion of the rooftop here. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go to my marquee tool. I'm going to hold down the option key. Notice how when I hold down the option key, a minus symbol pops up. If I hold down the shift key, a plus symbol pops up. So we can add or subtract from our selection depending on what key we hold on to. I'm going to hold down option. And I'm going to subtract all this stuff from the selection. Okay, so now it's just selecting from this line up. Okay, I'll double click on the background image to unlock it, and then I'm going to press delete. And then from here, I'm going to press Command D to deselect. 
take my move tool. I'm going to move this up to Fog City, that tab, and then move it down and drop it onto the image. Okay. All right. So here, I'm going to hit Command T. I want to make this smaller. I'm going to just make it the same width as the canvas here. Okay. I press return. Okay, uh, I'm going to rename this. This is City Hall for San Francisco. Okay, so I got that. I'm going to lock the uh, transparency on this. Take my gradient tool and I'm going to take the bottom of this and fade to black here. So now we're going to transition nicely to the black space down here. I didn't quite get that the way I wanted it, so I'm going to try that again. There we go. Okay. All right, this is pretty bright. I mean, no, this is actually shot at night, but they light up the, the city hall pretty bright, and I want to darken it a little bit. I want this poster to be a little bit more ominous. So I'm going to turn off my uh, lock transparency. I'll go to image adjustments levels. And I'm going to take the midtones down. There we go. And the light. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. I want it to stay dark. So let me check the output level right here. Make it a little bit darker here, maybe. That looks pretty good. So I can turn the preview on and off. You can see the effect. There's just too much light here. OK, so that looks good. Hit OK. Um, now, Diane Lane right here, uh, she's a little close to this the center tower on the city hall. So I think I'm going to move her over a little bit. Okay, and then I want to drop shadow on City Hall here. So um, I'm going to click on City Hall, go to Effects, click on Drop Shadow, move these sliders distance, spread, and size up a little bit. And then we can turn the preview on and off and see how that kind of separates the the tower from Idris Elba and 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 from Diane Lane here a little bit. So that works pretty good. So I got that same angle as uh, the Diane Lane sh drop shadow. Okay. So I'll hit OK on that. All right. So next I'm going to go to let's see the fog San Francisco California. This is the Golden Gate Bridge. I'm going to take this image. Take my move tool, move this image up to the Fog City tab, move it down, drop it on top. Now it's covering everything, so I want to move this layer to right above layer zero. Okay. And we'll name this bridge. Okay. I'll hit Command T, and this is a giant image, so we need to res resize it. And what I want is just one tower. The Golden Gate Bridge is so iconic, you can just recognize just the tower. So I'm going to add that in right here. And then I might nudge it over a little bit. OK. And then what I want to do is I want to take my lasso tool. I don't want this section over here. I'm going to delete that. OK. So I hit Command D. And now. Um, I'm going to go to the bridge. I'm on the bridge layer. I'm going to lock transparency, right? I'll take my gradient tool and I'm going to start here, drag down. I want to fade out on that. So let me try that again. OK. 
keep doing this until I get the gradient that I want. That looks pretty good. Do the same thing from the bottom right here. And I just keep doing this until I, until I get that gradient that I like. And there's a little bit of experimentation that happens with this. I think that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit over this way. That might be too much. I might leave that. I think I'm going to leave the edge there. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's go to City 5. No, City 8. Take my Move tool. I'm going to move this image up to Fog City. And then down. Okay, so here we have Pier 7 in San Francisco. And then we've got the Transamerica building right here. This is an iconic part of the San Francisco skyline. So we kind of want to put that in the poster if the movie's about San Francisco. So I'm going to hit Command T. And I'm going to resize this. It's too large right now. So we want to make sure we get the, sky, the city skyline here. I don't want to I don't want to put this too close to the edge. I want to kind of get that over a little bit. All right. Also don't want uh, anything like right over his head that might be distracting. So let me maybe move this up a little bit. Yeah, okay. Let's get that out of the way. Okay. So now, um, I'm going to cut off a chunk of this right here on the pier. Okay. So I'll hit Command D. And the reason I did that is because I don't want these two to overlap. Okay. So um, now that I'll rename this to Pier 7. Okay. I'm going to lock transparency, take my gradient tool here. I want to fade that out right there. And you see how now this is starting to blend together? Right here, it looks like, okay, well, this has clearly been cut from another image. But I add in my gradient, and now it, it seems like it belongs in the image. Okay. All right. Um, this is a little bit bright here, so let's take the levels on this down a little bit. Um, I'll turn off lock transparency on this. I'm going to go to image adjustments and then go to levels and let's take the light oh that's going the wrong way. Let's take the midtones down too far. It's actually pretty close, I think, to what we'd want for the poster. Okay. Now, there, I'm not really feeling the separation here to here. Like, the separation right here with Ige's Elba and the sky looks pretty good, but this is pretty busy right here, a lot of detail and stuff. And you've got his head. So I'm going to kind of fake in, I think, uh, uh, a drop shadow on this. So I'm going to go to the Idris layer. Actually, you know, I'm going to stay on Pier 7. Create a new layer. I'm going to call this Shadow. And I'm going to take my paintbrush. 
make sure it's a soft brush, okay? And you want to take your opacity and flow. My flow is at 40%, my opacity is at pretty much 60%. And I'm gonna paint in a little shadow here. lightly so I'm using multiple strokes here it's kind of a delicate balance trying to figure out what that should be and I think there shouldn't be a shadow up here but there should be one over here a little bit let me go a little bit larger on this I want to fade it I think that looks pretty good Okay, let me go to Pier 7 here, take my Move tool, and nudge it up a little bit. That shouldn't hurt, yeah. That looks better. Sometimes the, simp the uh, easiest solution is the simplest one. Okay, that, looks, that all looks pretty good, I think. All right, so we've got a whole bunch of different images here. They have different color temperatures. This is warm, this is neutral, this is cold, this is also cold. This has a mixture of warm and cold, okay? So what we can do is we can turn this whole thing, like, for example, we could turn it all black and white and make it like, you know, uh, a, a film noir poster, right? So we can add an adjustment layer and go to black and white. And let's see, I did that wrong. This adjustment layer should be at the top right here. Okay. So you can see here it is in color, here it is in black and white. And now all of these uh, images, because there's no color temperature, it's all connecting a little bit better. Okay. Um, let's see. Now what I like to do is I like to, now that we've made it monochromatic, I like to add a little bit of color on top of it. So for example, I could take another adjustment layer and do a gradient. And the gradient I'll choose will be this first one right here. And then I'm going to do, on one side, I'm going to do blue. And on the other side, you're clicking on this little square. On the other side, I'm going to do an orange. Okay. All right, so we have a gradient, and I'll hit OK. This gradient right now is set to normal, but if I set it to overlay, it's going to add that little bit of color to the whole image. Okay, as you can see the difference. Here's black and white, and here's a little bit of the color overlay. Okay, so it's not totally black and white, but it is the color has been simplified on this image, okay? All right, so let's add in a title down here. Uh, I'm gonna add it right above City Hall. So I'll take my text tool, I'm gonna click and drag a box right here. Uh, let me uh, make this a little bit taller. Uh, I'm choosing a font called Copper Plate, okay, right here, and I'm at 200 font size and the title of this is going to be fog city now right now the color of my font is set to black I'm going to set it to white I'll try this again fog city okay I'll move this down we need to make this a little bit smaller it's a little bit too large Okay, it's a little bit plain, so I'm going to add some effects to this layer. I'm going to add a gradient overlay, and I'm going to add an inner glow. So I'm going to go back, let's see, go to the gradient overlay right here, and The scale slider, this is kind of interesting. You can mess with this a little bit. All right, I think that'll look okay. The inner glow here, I'm going to change this to blue. I 
and let's change the choke. No. The settings that we have, the default settings are pretty good. Okay. So right in here on Diane Lane, I might make a few more adjustments here. Um, I think the light right here, there's like a, a I didn't quite get the um, all the uh, pixels removed here. So I'm going to take my eraser here. And I'm going to try and trim a little bit more off of her hair. And then up here, this is a little bit obvious that her hair cuts off. So there's not much we can do about that. But I am going to try and get rid of this here. Okay, so we've re removed a little bit more along the edges here, but I'm still not quite satisfied. So I think what I want to do is a little, little more blending on uh, the Diane Lane layer here. So I'm going to switch to my paintbrush, and I'm going to choose a soft brush. And um, you can see I've got a rather large brush here. And I want to make sure my color is set to black. And then um, over here on your opacity and flow, make sure that they're set to 60%, 40%. And then what I want to do is... Um, I want to just lightly, actually before we do that, we need to go to the Diane Lane layer and lock the transparent pixels. So now when I paint on here, I'm just going to paint on that layer. And I just want to blend it into the darkness on Idris Elba, his shoulder there. So I'm lightly painting in here. And I'll do a little bit down here, darken this a little bit. Maybe we'll still see the hair, the edges of her hair in the back here. A little bit like that. And then on this side, notice like her cheek and her, and her jaw right here, when um, it meets up with total blackness on the canvas right here. Uh, right here, this is her cheek and her jaw, and right here behind that layer is just black pixels right but up here we've got I just help his jacket so what I'll probably want to do is just blend her hair a little just go a little bit darker around right here or maybe up here let me go a little bit larger with my brush here Do the same thing at the top a little bit here. Okay. So I'm going to zoom out here and just take a closer look at this. And I like that a lot more. I like that how it just kind of blends in with the shadow. Uh, it's actually the drop shadow that we added earlier, but I think it's a little bit smoother. Uh, it blends in with the entire image a little bit easier. So I'm going to keep that. All right, so now it's time to save our work. I'm going to go to File, and then I'll go to Save As, and make sure that you are saving a PSD file, Photoshop file, to your Photoshop Unit 4 Exercise Files folder. So we'll hit the Save button right there. And then we'll save a copy. I'll go to File, Save As, and this time it'll be a JPEG. So then make sure you put in your name and the period on this file and make sure that the title is in there, Fog City, and then send that file to the Dropbox. All right, we're all done with our third poster.